the number of things that you can do with an amateur radio license is really quite amazing. Uh, it's a brand new year and I was making a list of things I was hoping to accomplish in the ham radio hobby this year and the list started getting pretty big. And then I thought, why not make a bigger list and share it with all of you? And that's what I did. I came up with 50 things you can do in the ham radio hobby this year. So whether you're an experienced ham looking for a new challenge this year, or whether you're just curious about the hobby and want a better understanding of what you can do with a license, this video is for you. Should be interesting. Let's get going. I'm in my shack today. Uh, it's nice and sunny outside, but it's cold. Uh, too cold to uh, go for a hike or uh, go operate outside today, so I'm in my shack. Let's get started on the list of 50 things you can do in ham radio this year. Hams love their contests. There's contests happening all the time, year round. Uh, they happen on all different ham bands and all different types of modulation, from digital to CW to single side band, all the different uh, types. They run a certain length of time and the object is usually to make as many contacts as you can in that given time period. You submit your logs and you get awards if you win. Uh, even if you're not going after wins or trying to win an award, the bigger contests uh, are a great time to get on the air because it's a great way to make a lot of contacts in a short period of time. So join a contest. Nets are like conference calls for hams. They happen on repeaters, they happen on HF, they even have nets on the digital voice systems like DSTAR and DMR. Uh, why don't you go ahead, at the beginning of most nets, they usually take check-ins, not every net, but they like to take check-ins to find out who's listening, who might participate in the net, and uh, there's all different types of topics. So why don't you find a net you're interested in that covers a topic you're interested in uh, on any one of the platforms and check in. You can send email via ham radio, which is actually pretty cool. You can use WinLink, which is both a program and infrastructure set up by hams for hams to send email, or you can use APRS. So go ahead and send that email. If you're in the United States and you're stuck with a call sign that you don't like, well, you can get a free vanity call sign and it's shorter. Uh, technicians, general, extra, it's all open. Extras get the shortest call sign, but anyone can get a free call sign of their choosing. Way better than the one that FCC gave you. Digital modes are kind of controversial, but a lot of people use them. The hot one right now is FT8. A lot of people on FT8, easy to make a lot of contacts very quick, but there's a lot of other digital modes. Olivia, Hellscriber, I mean, there's a bunch. Why don't you try a new one? Got a tech license, why not upgrade to a general? And if you're a general like me, why don't you upgrade to an extra? I plan to do that this year. And if you're an extra, well, do one of the other 49 things on this list. Building is a great skill to have, and there's lots of kits and projects available now more than ever. You can find kits and projects to build from radios to antennas to accessories, uh, all different types of skill level from easy to very hard. Uh, but why don't you build something? Parks on the Air or POTA is a year-round activity designed to get hams out of the house, get them operating out of doors. Uh, you can go to their website and see which parks in your area might be available for you to score points. You go to the park, you activate it, you make contacts, and then you get points, and with enough points you start getting awards. Pretty cool activity. Ham fists are great places to buy new and used equipment, learn from other people, interact with fellow hams, and basically just have a good time. The biggest ham fest is up in Dayton, Ohio once a year. There's other big ones kind of regionally, but if you get a chance, if there's one in your area, you should definitely go to a ham fest. I'll go to a couple this year. I'm hoping to get to Dayton. Yeah, if you're a ham, I probably don't have to remind you to think about buying a new radio. You're already probably thinking about that now. 
Morse code, or CW as we call it in the hobby, used to be a requirement for getting your license. You used to have to know Morse code to get an amateur radio license. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore, but it is still a widely used and very effective way to do ham radio. You can make contacts all over the world uh, at any time using Morse code. It's super effective and efficient. You can actually make contacts further away with CW than you can with voice. The lifeblood of any hobby is attracting new people to come into the hobby. So why don't you make it a goal this year to convince somebody to get their license. If you have friends with similar interests, they might also share an interest or curiosity about ham radio. Talk to them about it. Get them licensed. You can send SMS text messages using ham radio. You can do it via APRS. If there's other ways, let me know in the comments section. De-expeditions. These are things where people spend thousands and thousands of dollars and years planning to go to some far-flung corner of the planet that's usually uninhabited and way far away from humanity. They set up ham radio stations and they make contacts for days and there's huge pileups. Everybody wants to make that contact because who knows the next chance you'll get to make a contact on, you know, South Pacific deserted island. But if you can do it this year, they announce them well in advance. Uh, you can make contacts with some part of the world you may never have a chance to do again. Yeah, if you're not one of those crazy conspiracy theory people, the moon is up there and you can bounce radio frequency off of it. Uh, people use giant antennas and lots of power uh, to make UHF, VHF contacts on the other side of the planet by bouncing their signal off the moon. Pretty cool stuff. Requires a specialty equipment. Pretty expensive, but if you can find someone in your area who's doing it, they'd probably be happy to show you and even let you try to make a contact. There's two field days, summer field day and winter field day. It encourages hams to get outside, set up a station, and make a whole bunch of contacts over the course of a weekend. If you're part of a club, your club will probably set up a, a big you know, thing for field day. I know my club did last year. It was great fun. I plan on doing it again this year. I might even take part in winter field day. We'll see. But uh, if you're looking to make a lot of contacts, find out when field day is because the bands are jam packed with people. You can't help but make tons of contacts when field day is going on. And hey, get outside. It's a lot of fun. If you're interested in ham radio because of emergency preparedness, well, you need a GoBox. A GoBox is basically a self-contained ham radio setup, uh, self-powered, that you can just grab and go and set up anywhere and, uh, and have some communication. So build that GoBox. There are so many different opportunities for hams to volunteer. You can volunteer for uh, different organizations. You know that uh, a lot of times road races, bicycle races, marathons, they still rely on hams to volunteer, stand on the course with their radios and report any problems that might be happening on course. So a lot of opportunities to volunteer. Why don't you put your skills to use for the community? Yes, there are satellites that orbit the earth that have ham radio repeaters on them. You can send your signal to the satellite. It'll repeat it over a wide area of the earth other people can respond to you and you can make contacts by using satellite repeaters. Cool stuff. Hams who participate in a lot of contests or activities that uh, have awards are called paper chasers. They like to, you know, wallpaper their house with different awards that they get for their activities. Uh, there's a lot of awards that you can get, uh, not only from contests, but other things like worked all states uh, on all the different modes, all the different bands, also DXCC, uh, worked every county. There's just a ton of awards that you can chase. So why don't you find one, make it your goal, and get that paper. This is by far the easiest one on the list. You have an interest in ham radio. That's why you're watching the video. And I try to put out decent ham radio content. It's like a match made in heaven. Go ahead and click subscribe. Poda was on the list earlier, parks on the air. Well, there's also something called summits on the air. Same concept, get out of the house, climb a mountain, make some contacts and get some award points. I've got a video where I activate a local mountain called Kennesaw Mountain. That was a fun day. I'm not sure if all amateurs in the world have a QRZ page. It's qrz.com, but I know they automatically give everyone, I think in the US, their own page. 
Uh, when you make contact with somebody, oftentimes if they're near a computer, they'll be looking you up on qrz.com. So why not update your page, put some new photos on it if you've had a page for a while, put what you've been doing lately on it, and check out mine, k4bbl on qrz.com. Clubs are great, but they're not for everybody. Some people use social media as their ham radio club, whether it be Reddit or Facebook groups or wherever, whatever corner of the internet, people are sharing ham radio information. Why don't you go there, hang out a little bit, and if you see somebody new or interested in the hobby that has a question, answer it. And hey, be nice. Be nice. Speaking of clubs, if you've got a ham radio club, you know, within driving distance, Go to one of their meetings. You don't have to join. They'll love to have you. And uh, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll meet some nice folks. Maybe you'll want to join the club. Everyone's welcome at my club's meetings. I know that for a fact. North Fulton Amateur Radio League. If you're in North Georgia, feel free. We have meetings once a month. Come to one of our meetings and check it out. This one might take either some patience or, you know, if you've convince somebody to get their license, you can automatically be their first contact. If you're a ham, you remember your first contact. Everyone does. Uh, why don't you hang out on the repeaters or, or you know, wait for somebody to make that call, throw their call out there, answer it. You might just be somebody's first contact. Special event stations can be a lot of fun. They happen all the time, all around the country. They could be uh, warships, they could be monuments, uh, you know, th there'll be special events for a lot of different things. Last year I worked the 13 Colonies event. Basically there was a special event station or stations in each of the 13 colonies and everyone over the course of a long weekend tried to make contacts with all 13 colonies. I did, it was a blast. Make a contact with a special event station. I'm definitely doing this one this year. I'm going to find something big in metal that was never meant to be an antenna, and I'm going to use it as an antenna. You'll need a good tuner. I'm in my shack today because it's cold outside. You can see my shack definitely needs an upgrade. I need stuff on the walls, maybe some awards or something. But why don't you upgrade your shack too? A new chair, something new on the walls, new monitor. I mean, make it a more comfortable place to be because that's where you want to be. Every couple months, astronauts or NASA or the Russian Space Agency are celebrating something and they'll send a bunch of pictures down to Earth using slow scan television. You can use your handheld ham radio, a phone, a tablet, or a computer to decode those images as they get sent down. I made a video doing just this thing recently. I'll put a link in the description. It's fun. So we've all made contacts with somebody in their QTH or in their car. That's not too tough, but how about somebody on a bicycle or someone under parachute uh, or someone in, you know, I don't know, airplane, helicopter. Why don't you try to find an unconventional station and work them this year? Put them in the logbook. A lot of people in the radio control hobby get their amateur radio license so they can fly drones or planes using amateur radio frequencies. You already have the license or you want your license, so why not get the plane or drone and give it a fly? So when meteors come through the atmosphere, they leave a wake, a disturbance, and you can actually bounce RF energy off of that disturbance. It can last anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Well, some people use highly directional antennas and a lot of power to extend the range of VHF and UHF over the horizon. They'll make contacts using meteor scatter. Again, something you may want to find somebody who's already doing it to give it a try. So you've got your tower and your stacked beams and your full legal limit power amp. Uh, it's pretty easy for you to make contacts. Why don't you try to go outside and work a little QRP, five watts, 10 watts, uh, with just a wire in the tree. It's a challenge, that makes it fun. Here's another contest that works year round and you can just get points wherever, flora and fauna. Uh, these tend to be more of the nature preserves or uh, animal preserve type parks, but you can find a list of parks in flora and fauna. You can go there, you can make contacts, you can get points. Another great activity. Microwaves, they're great at heating up hot pockets. They can also be used to carry your voice and data. Technicians have access to microwave uh, bands. Why not try to make a microwave radio, make a contact, or find somebody who's already doing it and just use their station. 
A lot of modern day products kick off noisy RF signals. I'm looking at you, Plasma Screen TV. They can interfere with ham radio stations. So if you've got a station in your house and you're struggling with noise, find that noise and kill it. Ferrite beads are your friend. When ham radio operators go fox hunting, it very rarely involves horses, beagles, and trumpets. More than likely, it'll involve highly directional antennas. Somebody will hide a transmitting beacon, and then a bunch of other people will use their location finding antennas to go try to find that transmitter. Fun stuff. You might be into boating and you know need a new boat anchor or need your boat anchor fixed up, but in the ham radio hobby, boat anchors are old radios, mostly because they're huge, heavy, and require tubes. If you're into fixing things, if you like the idea of tinkering with electronics, why don't you buy one of these old radios, fix it up, and get it back on the air? That would be neat. As modern consumers, we all rely on product reviews to decide what we're going to buy. Well, if you're a ham radio operator and you've used a product for a while, why don't you go ahead and write an in-depth review? You know, be honest, be thorough. It'll help everyone else in the hobby out make good buying decisions. Thanks. If you own, operate, maintain, or are the webmaster of a ham radio related website, you need to update your website. Seriously. D-Star, DMR, System Fusion, all great digital voice technologies. You don't have to use the internet. You can actually use digital voice simplex, and there's even some opportunities to use digital voice on the HF bands. Uh, so why don't you give one of them a try? It's actually pretty fun. I do DMR and D-Star. I know a lot of people get into ham radio for emergency preparedness. Well, if you're really concerned about emergencies and you want to help out and you want to be the best at emergency communications, you should join one of these two groups, Aries and Races. Uh, they are the people who actually deploy when there is an emergency to set up emergency communications. They work with local governments and uh, first responders and they work together to make plans and to deploy and practice. So if you're serious about emergency communications, think about joining one of these two groups. The International Space Station currently has a digipeter on it. You can send APRS packets up to the space station and it will resend them out over a big part of the Earth. You can make contacts this way. You can receive APRS packets from much further away than you normally would be able to, thanks to the International Space Station. Hams sure have found a lot of ways to pull off two-way communication. One of the more interesting ones is SSTV, slow scan television. This is where hams will transmit images with some text on it, their call sign, their location, signal reports, things like that. They'll exchange two or three images and it actually counts as a legit contact for contests, awards, things like that. Uh, it's pretty popular on 20 meters and 40 meters. You can check it out. I have a video where I did this on UHF, so you can check that out too. Much like ham radio websites, there's a lot of room for improvement for ham radio apps. So if you're able to code, you can do the community a huge service and probably make some money by writing new and improved apps for phones, tablets, computers, whatever. But ham radio apps, there's an opportunity there. Boy Scouts, they can earn a radio merit badge. They need to learn a lot about radio. They need to make some contacts or build a radio. You can help them out with that. You're an expert. Help a Boy Scout. Doesn't have to be solar, but find some other way to power your station, whether it be solar, wind, water, I don't know. Uh, there's lots of green ways to produce energy, and you can use that to make contacts. Uh, especially if you're into emergency communications, you need some kind of off-grid power. Am I right? So eHAM has a bit of a reputation. Uh, usually when this question is asked, it conflates into a giant flame war, which is kind of amusing. So really, this one's more for my benefit than yours, but do it if you want. Whew, finally, we're up to number 50, and it is simple. Uh, why don't you do the ham radio community a service and add uh, your ideas or what you might be planning to do this year down in the comments. Uh, I know there's a lot, lot, lot more 
uh, to do with your ham radio license. I know I just scratched the surface on all the 50 that I listed, but if you have other ideas, please share them with us. Thanks. That's my list of 50 things you can do in ham radio this year. I hope you got some ideas or maybe it inspired you to get your license. Uh, either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe, share it with a friend. I sure do appreciate it. This is K4BBL and I'm clear. 7-3.